The definitive edition of Age of Empires 3 continues to encourage civilizations to begin fighting it out earlier, and in this video, I'm going to go over why Germany gets a politician that turns them into an even bigger team game monster. The logistician for the Germans is focusing on a Germany who wants to fight in the Second Age, which is most likely a team game Germany, or a Germany that doesn't think they can get to the Fortress Age before they die to the enemy rush. It firstly provides an arsenal wagon. The arsenal for the Germans has four basic upgrades that are relevant to them. The first is infantry breastplate. The second is counter infantry rifling. The third is ranged cavalry caracol. The fourth is cavalry cuirass. Because this is only the second age, it's not worth considering the value of researching the ranged infantry or ranged cavalry upgrade, as those units aren't available until fortress age. So that leaves the infantry breastplate and cavalry cuirass. Germans, more than any other civilization, want to hit Fortress Age as quickly as possible, and often, if they're building crossbow or pike, it's only because they're building those units, because if they didn't, they would have to surrender before they got to Fortress. Overall, I don't consider the infantry breastplate a strong upgrade for the Germans, because it affects their pikemen, their crossbows, and realistically, they're not going to be building those units once they hit Fortress. They're going to be building skirmishers, not crossbows, and war wagons, not pikemen, so those resources will go to complete waste. The second upgrade is for hand cavalry. So the Ulan, unlike the Hussar, have a much higher proportion of attack than they do health. If this arsenal upgrade was 10% attack to hand cav, then I would absolutely be singing from the roof about how strong this was for the Germans. But it's only 10% health for a unit which already does not have a lot of health, which means the scaling isn't going to be particularly high. It is still a strong upgrade, and it's still an upgrade that you're going to want to get if you're massing Ulans in the Second Age. Overall, the ability to have the arsenal in the Second Age for the Germans is particularly strong in team games, as it means the mass of Ulans, as they're fighting in and out of skirmishes and pikemen, are going to be able to survive for longer and deal more damage because they've got more health. The second component of this bonus is that all your First Age and Second Age shipments receive an extra Ulan. So obviously, Age 1 shipments don't deliver any Ulans. That will be increased to 1, and Age 2 shipments will go from 2 Ulans to 3 Ulans. So Germans already want to take a trade post as early as possible. They are a civilization that's heavily focused on receiving shipments because of their Ulan bonus. But this just incentivizes them further to take control of all the trading posts and really fight to get as many shipments as they can. I expect you're going to see a lot more Germans, especially in team games, remaining in the Second Age for a lot longer than before, because they are able to include more shipments in their deck that they normally wouldn't be including. Shipments like 600 food, 600 wood, two settler wagons in Age 2. And because of the added bonus of the extra Ulan, people aren't going to hesitate to send those shipments anymore. You know, often as a German player, when you're sitting in the late Second Age, you might build up one or two shipments because you're very cognizant of the fact you're going to be hitting Fortress, and as soon as you do, there's very specific unit shipments you need when you arrive. But now, with this change, what it means is that you're not particularly worried that you're using a shipment at this point in the game, because you're still going to be receiving your Ulan bonus at the equivalent level as if you were in the Fortress Age. From the very first shipment, German players are going to witness the power of this bonus. If they go to raid, it's an extra Ulan that can kill an extra villager. If they have to defend a rush, it's an extra Ulan that can kill a Strelit. In the context of these fights, it's important to remember that that third Ulan is always going to be the last surviving Ulan. That third Ulan is always going to be the Ulan that does the most damage to the enemy, simply because you wouldn't have had it otherwise. Which means that throughout the duration of the fight, that extra Ulan is whacking away with his sword. He is always the last Ulan to fall and he's always the Ulan that does the most damage. Just a tiny change in the starting conditions of the fight can mean a significant change in the final outcome. So now we get to opportunity cost. The Germans have access to the Quartermaster, which is the most powerful Second Age politician in the game. Previously, the Germans never had to really chop too much while they were in the transition period. But with this, the Germans are definitely going to have to be chopping more wood as soon as they hit that age up button, they're going to be heavily on wood. They're going to have to gather enough for their TP, which is 200, 
this stable, which brings it to 400, and to build a house, which is now a total of 500. Now, keep in mind, the first shipment is probably going to be three settler wagons. That's now a 12 population shipment, which means you're going to need a second house ASAP. So because of the extra 200 wood that you had to spend on a stable, it means that you're going to have to delay other things, whether that means your market or whether that means more housing. It's evident that there is an opportunity cost to be considered here, as it will definitely see a reduction in early age 2 efficiency for the Germans. I suspect it means that we might see build orders change, so that instead of three settler wagons as the first card, we will see 700 coin as the first card sent in the second age. That way it guarantees that they don't miss any Ulans on their first batch. That way it guarantees they don't pop themselves. From there they can send their 700 wood, and then eventually their three settler wagons. But one thing I've learned is to never underestimate the economic power of the early game German. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do start to see build orders pop up, where they're able to take this politician, and it doesn't affect their unit production at all. Overall, I'm satisfied that this politician is incredibly strong for the Germans. For a 1v1 German who's looking to fast fortress, it's probably best that they remain with the quartermaster. But for a German who's looking to fight it out in the second age, there's no better politician than this one. If you enjoyed this video, and you're looking forward to seeing more in-depth videos like this for the other civilizations, I encourage you to subscribe to the channel, as the next five civilizations will be looked at over the coming days. Thank you for watching.